Today in the news, the future of DDR memory looks pretty good, and GDDR6 gets a massive facelift. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. All right. so. DDR memory, I mean, we just got DDR5. And honestly, if we look at the performance, which by the way, you can check out my comparison on the Hardware Connects channel right up here. But if we look at that, early DDR5 modules aren't doing so hot. Sure, on paper, it's an amazing boost. The bandwidth is amazing, but the actual realized performance isn't that great, at least not for gaming. Over time though, things will change as the tech matures and better timings and transfer speeds become available. But that's where we're at. So what's new in memory? Well, DDR6, of course. During the uh, Samsung Tech Day of 2021, we learned that the company is actually currently in development with DDR6 memory. Now, the specs are kind of insane. For DDR5, the official JDEC data rate for a memory stick is 6,400 megabits per second. Then for overclocking modules, you're looking at up to 8,500 megabits per second. Well, the DDR6 memory modules in development by Samsung right now would start at 12,800 megabits per second. I mean, at this point, we should just say 12.8 gigabits per second, which is insane. The overclocking modules, on the other hand, go even further at all the way up to 17 gigabits per second. But that's not where it stops. There are other changes made for this new standard. In case you didn't know, DDR5 brought a change in the module. Instead of one channel per stick at 64 bit each, DDR5 brings two channels per stick at 32 bits each. I mean, technically, DDR5 is quad channel the moment you put a second stick in. It's just that it's the same 64 bit width per stick at the end of the day. DDR6 on the other hand would double that and have four channels per stick. And we're not talking about 16 bit channels, no. These four channels are all 64 bit wide. This would be true octo channel memory here. That's quadruple the bandwidth when compared to DDR5. Now, obviously, we're real far from it being released, but it's still interesting to see what's to come. There's still the possibility that we're in the same situation as right now with DDR4 and DDR5, but these are huge changes for DDR6. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. During that Samsung Tech Day, we also got some news about the next generation of GDDR memory for GPUs. Apparently, the company is working on a new iteration of GDDR6 called GDDR6 Plus. This version would far surpass the limits in memory of both GDDR6 and GDDR6X. With current memory configurations, we can see up to about 16 gigabits per second for standard GDDR6 and 19.5 gigabits per second for GDDR6X. There are rumors that the uh, 3090 Ti would get up to 21 gigabits per second, but it's a rumor for now. But GDDR6 Plus, that would be about 50% faster than the average GDDR6 and 25% faster than GDDR6X with a speed of around 24 gigabits per second. That's the starting point. I know I use this word a lot, but insane. GDDR7 is also on the roadmap, but there's not much to say about it, except for the fact that it would bring that bandwidth all the way up to 32 gigabits per second, and it would have real-time error correction. Now, as speeds go up and manufacturing processes get smaller, errors happen more often. That's why DDR5 sticks have on-die error correction, and that error correction on GDDR7 would be pretty much the same. All right, let's move on from the technical stuff and get some gaming news in. If you didn't know, I'm a huge fan of Smash Bros. And it was pretty much the only 2D platformer that I liked. I know that Nickelodeon dropped one, but honestly, it looks pretty janky to me. Anyways, for the news, Warner Brothers officially announced their own version of a Smash Bros-like game, and boy, does it look good. It's called Multiverses, and it basically uses the Warner Brothers properties. You can play as Bugs Bunny, Jake the Dog, Shaggy, Finn the Human, Harley Quinn, and many more. Oh, and of course, I'm Batman. 
And all of that will be free to play. I mean, they'll probably heavily monetize it, but I'm for sure going to try this one out. What about you? And we haven't done this in a while, the free game check. Over on the Epic Store, you can get three free games. First, there's Guild of Dungeoneering. This one is a mouthful. It's a turn-based dungeon crawling card battler that looks kind of fun if you're into that sort of thing. Then you have a not game game. Yep, that's a thing now. You got Kid Amnesia Exhibition. It's a trippy slash unsettling world where you basically bask in all of the weirdness. Since it's not a game, I'm probably gonna give it a five minute try or something like that. The last game is an indie game with a story to tell. It's called Never Alone, and it's a puzzle style platformer where you follow a kid and his dog. Let me know if you try any of these. Anyways, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Yes, the computer's blue this time, or is it purple? Anyways guys, stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one. It's called Never Alone or Kisima Ingichun. Ah, wow, I do not know how to pronounce that.